welcome back to Willow Bike It. It's the Christmas holidays, it's really cold, um, but I thought it might be fun to take a modern recipe and adapt it using Viking Age ingredients and utensils and see whether I can make a Viking version. Obviously I'm not gonna claim this is something that they would have done, we just wanna see whether they could have. And I could do this on a semi-regular basis, if people like the idea, I've got some other ideas for things that would work. But today, as I said, it's Christmas. So what I'm gonna do is take a mince pie and see whether or not I can bike it. So traditional mince pies would have contained meat and it's something I've deliberately decided not to do because I want this recipe to be accessible to everybody. Um, so if you do really wanna try a meat version, check out my Eat Like a Halfling book. There is a recipe in there but I'll also pop the recipe for free on my website, which is saxonforager.co.uk. I'll pop some links underneath too. Obviously modern mince pies contain quite a few things that I can't use here. So citrus, raisins, and other dried fruits, uh, brandy, sugar. I think pastry is doable. It's butter and flour after all, um, but I'll have to cook them in an open fire. So I think probably on a skillet or possibly, I might like the clay oven. Obviously, if I like the clay oven, I'm elevating the status a little bit, but I think some of the ingredients are going to do that anyway. I'm probably thinking about things like figs, ginger, cinnamon. All would have been imported, but all would have been very expensive. But as this is just for fun, let's forget about status and let's see whether or not I can do it. There's every chance this won't work. So stay tuned to the end and find out whether or not I like it. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna use the clay oven for this one, so I'm just gonna get it lit, and then I'll get baking. It is absolutely freezing today. Okay, so while I get the fire going, I'm just gonna cut away to a short interview I did. Um, it's under five minutes, uh, but the guy's very busy, um, very famous, so I'm lucky to get him at all, but, uh, have a listen and we'll come back to the fire and the mince pies shortly. Today I've got a very special guest with me. Um, I'm sure you can all guess who it is. I've got Santa. Um, he's a little bit busy. I've caught him halfway around the world. Um, so thanks for spending time with me. No Obviously we'll, we'll keep this one very brief today because I know you're a busy man. Very. Yeah. <laughs> so tonight you've obviously been going around and people have been giving you lots of treats and snacks. Yeah. Do you have a favourite? What's what's the best thing for people to leave you? I enjoy a nice mince pie. A nice homemade mince, mince pie. pie. Yeah, one of my favourites. I bet you've had a few tonight. A few too many. Yeah? Yeah, a few too many. Are you counting or are you just kind of... I lost count after you lost a few count. hundred. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so then when you get home, I mean, Christmas Day, most people are going to have their Christmas dinner. Do you go home and have your Christmas dinner after all that? I can't eat anything Christmas day after all the cookies and mince pies and so on. No, I can't eat anything for the rest of the day. Not for the rest of just for the day? Just for the day, yeah. yeah. Sure. Then I'll start again. So Boxing Day, do you have a Boxing Day lunch? Yeah, normally yeah. Boxing Day lunch. Mrs. Yeah. Claus cooks me a nice dinner. Yeah? Yeah. Is that full roast roast with all the trimmings? Normally roast, roast turkey with all the trimmings. Oh, yeah. lovely. Whilst you're travelling around as well, People normally leave you out a drink, don't they? Do you have a favourite tipple? I do. I do enjoy a nice whiskey. A nice whiskey. So Keeps going, me warm inside. Going down the spirits route. Yes. Definitely. I suppose you can't really leave Santa a, a hot chocolate or a cup of tea, can you? Because no. it's, it's going to be cold by the time you get there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so the really pressing question that I have personally is why did I get cold last year? You know why you got cold. You know the reason to that, and I think we'll leave it at that. Okay. I don't want the world yeah. to know. No, I probably shouldn't have brought it up, should I? No. No. So, um, just to bring it back, because obviously you know I'm a Viking reenactor, I do a bit of Saxon stuff as well, but you've been around for, what, thousands of years? More, yeah. More, uh, yeah. So during the, the Vikings and Saxons, who was the naughtiest? I'd love to say the Saxons. The Saxons? Yeah. Any particular reason? Well, one year I, I ripped my sack on one of their spears. On a spear? I never forgot that. Yeah? Yeah, they left that left the out. It's not a good move for Santa. No, so they've always been on my bad list. Okay. Oh yeah, I've, I've just remembered actually, I've got a little joke I was going to tell you. Do you like a joke? I enjoy a good joke. Being as we get some bad jokes in the crackers. So, there's this Viking called Rudolph the Red. And he looks out 
outside and he says to his wife, it's going to rain. And she says, how do you know that? He says, because Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> I do like that one. <laughs> yeah, I do like that one. I can't take credit for it. It's, uh, I think I saw it on Facebook, but... Um... <laughs> thought it was relevant for today yeah, I yeah. Agree that. yeah. so I've got um, just a couple of closing questions um, that I kind of I've been asking all my guests but uh, do you listen to podcasts whilst you're travelling around the world sometimes when you? I get the signal yeah yeah different areas different signals yeah. okay so um, do you think you survive on a Viking Age diet you've already said you did survive in the Viking Age so I guess you you know what the food was like yeah um, but so would you like to go back to that kind of way no because I've as you know, I've got a very sweet tooth. You do. Yeah. You know, I like my chocolate chip cookies, mince pies. Yeah. Candy canes. Yeah, I no, I wouldn't survive again if back then. So that kind of leads into another question that I ask everyone is, is there a food you'd miss if you're on a Viking Age diet? One I would miss mainly is my candy canes. Candy canes. Forever around the workshop. Because they had honey, so you could still get your, you know, your sweets, but I guess you're not going to get your candy canes, your no. cookies. Yeah, it's the colour and the taste of candy canes. You can't beat that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I won't keep you any longer. I know you're very busy. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming on. Um, maybe we'll do a follow-up next time you come around. Yes, most definitely. Right. Yeah. Candy canes, candy canes, candy canes. Don't you get it? All right, so let's get back to these mince pies. The fire's going quite nicely now. Um, so I'm probably going to aim for about 2 to 250 degrees Celsius for these pies. Uh, the oven itself, I think the max I've had is about 550, 600. But to be honest, my thermometer cuts out at that point. Well, while that's heating up, I'm going to get on and knock up some filling for the pies. So we'll start with, I'm going to cut up a couple of apples into cubes. Obviously take the cores out as well. Oh, I should probably clarify, I mean the middle of the apple, not the Irish band. I would run away. Sorry. I guess I probably should have used crab apples which would be a bit closer to the apples of the time, uh, but I don't have any, so... And a couple of plums. De-stoned. It's a shame I don't have any damsons. I do like a damson. Uh, if you don't know, that's more like a wild plum, sort of somewhere between a slow and a plum. Makes the best jam. And I think a handful of figs. So these are dried, which <clears throat> sorry, actually occurs to me now that if I was thinking about seasonality for this, mixing things, certain fruits this time of year wouldn't be available. So maybe I should have used some that were preserved in honey or wine. Um, or even dried, much like these figs. Another nice recipe for figs is figs in blankets, where they're stuffed with goat cheese and wrapped in bacon. See, so yeah, I've got a handful or two of uh, fresh blackberries. As I say, probably should have gone with dried or preserved in some way at least. And then I'm going to chuck in a handful of hazelnuts. I'm just going to crush them with the side of a knife. So this is where I get really lavish for the Viking Age. So I'm going to add a spoonful of ginger, a spoonful of cinnamon, um, and I think about half a spoon of coriander. And then I'm going to add a couple of spoonfuls of some honey. And a good splash of mead. This is the um, last bottle we've got actually. This is um, homebrewed by our friend Sigvard. He used to help out at Moorforge Viking Settlement. 
and give it all a good mix up. I'm just going to pop it in the entrance to the clay oven to warm through. I'm thinking about half an hour. We'll come back to that in a bit. So, here's a brief interlude. Here's my chickens. Right, so we're half an hour on, so let's have a look. Oven's getting nice and hot, which is good. Oh, that smells absolutely amazing. I think this might actually work. All right, so I'm gonna let that cool. I'm gonna make up some pastry. So I've got a couple of hundred grams of einkorn flour and a hundred grams of butter. I'm just gonna rub the butter into the flour until it's like breadcrumbs. So interestingly, einkorn is actually one of the earliest cultivated varieties of wheat. Um, and it differs because it's only got single grains on either side of the ear. Hence the name Einkorn, which is uh, Ein is a German for one. Right, so that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna add a splash of water. I just need enough to bring it all together. And just add a little bit at a time. And then I'm just gonna bring it all together to form a nice firm dough. I don't want it to be too sticky. It should leave the bowl relatively clean when I'm done. Right, so I've got my dough. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour over the worktop. Roll it out to maybe a millimeter thick. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to use a cup, one of my clay cups, it's actually Ocean's cup, I'm sure she won't mind, um, and use it to cut some rounds. Not sure how many we're going to get from this. So what I'm thinking is that I might put some filling on each round and fold them in half and cook them like a pasty.
All right, so I've ended up. I've got nine rounds. It's a good number. So a little bit of filling. I don't think they're going to be big enough to fold in half. So. Nah. I think I'm going to use two rounds and make a top. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so, try that again, a bit of fill in, a little bit of water around the edge just to seal it. And then I'm going to pop another round on top and just press the edges together. I think I'll crimp it with my sacks with a fork. If you haven't got a fork, use a knife. It'll work just as well. And I'll put a couple of holes in top to stop them from exploding or anything. Let the steam out. And I'm just going to carry on until they're all done. Now's a good time for a quick plug. If you haven't listened already, episode one of Will I Like It, I talked to Tom Timberell uh, about forks in Anglo-Saxon England. It's worth a listen if you haven't already. All right, and then I'm just gonna carry on until I've got them all done. Last one. We actually ended up with five, uh, but I've got a bit of pastry left and quite a lot of filling, so I'm sure I'll be making more. Alright, so. I think I'm going to put them on a skillet. And into my hot oven. So it's currently reading about 200 degrees. Okay, so they've been in for about 20 minutes. So let's go and take a look at them, see whether they're any good. So I can still just about feel my toes. Um, so let's give these a go. Obviously not winning any awards for presentation here. Um, definitely not gonna win Bake Off. But um, it's first attempt, so let's see whether they work. Take my hair out of my mouth. Oh, that's hot. Oh. So, they're really good. Um, but, I'm being really critical. It's not a mint pie. Um, it's really nice. The iron corn flour makes a nice crusty pastry. 
and the fruit flavor, uh, the flute, flute, bleh, bleh. the fruit filling is delicious. Nice amount of ginger and cinnamon. They're good. I mean, you can see there's a reasonable amount of filling in there. So I think overall they're a success. I'm just not convinced it's a mince pie. Maybe I should eat another one just to be sure. Hmm. Yeah, delicious. Hmm. Definitely make them again. Just to be sure. Oh, so yeah, uh, like and subscribe. And um, hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe give them a go. Um, and let me know if you've got any ideas or if you want to see any more videos of me trying to make Viking food from modern food. Not sure that I worded that very well. But you get the point. Bye! If you enjoyed the show and want to hear more, remember to like and subscribe and give the show a rating. You can also help keep the show going by becoming a Patreon where you'll get early access to all episodes. Or check out my range of merch on my store. Links are in the episode description. Thanks for watching.